Greetings to you, family and friends. Uh, it is a joy to come back to your homes. Uh, it's always a privilege and an honor to be right there with you at your homes, sharing God's Word, which is something that I love so dearly. Um, I'm actually enjoying um, this time, enjoying this time also in the presence of God, enjoying uh, the time spent with God and God downloading things. Uh, I'm sure you understand uh, Hearing me, hearing me, you hear the heart of God. I'm here to share God's heart with you once again and what God wants you to know. Um, I think as the word declares or as God word says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I'm here tonight, uh, this evening, just to bring to you God's word so that you are able to rise, you are able to uh, get out of the uncertainties, you are able to be strengthened, you're able also to know what God wants from you and also what God's going to be doing in the days to come. I think with this lockdown, so many people are so unsure, they are so uncertain, they are so fearful. But uh, <clears throat> in times like this, we need to hear God's voice so that God can be the one to bring direction for us and so that we know exactly what to do and how to get over and how to be overcomers through this difficult time through this crisis that the whole entire world is facing. And I'm sure you are hearing the news and watching the news. Uh, things are getting really out of hand. Things are getting worse day by day. But we as the children of God are standing together uh, with men, women all around the world and just trusting God that something supernatural is going to take place. And we believe that. I believe truly in my heart. I'm standing in faith and I'm here to declare to you as well that something supernatural is about to happen and God's people are in the safe place God's people in that, that's living in his presence are in the palm of his hands and God is the one that holds us dearly and hold us dear to him so that he's able to chart us through these waters through the difficult time through the storm that is that we are faced with and one of the things that I trust that you are doing is resting in God resting at home, resting with your families, spending this time. Uh, I know previous, before the lockdown, we've been so busy with so many things, uh, you know, um, the distractions, the enemy keeps us busy, the enemy puts stumbling blocks and things along our way that sometimes distracts us and keeps us so busy that we never get the time to, to really concentrate on the things that are really important. And I believe that this time that you are taking together with your family, uh, with your children, spending the time that probably we never had uh, prior to uh, the lockdown. And uh, <clears throat> just before I get into the word, I really want to uh, urge you, I really want to uh, just bring this to your attention, that just be careful of what things you are posting on the net. There's so much of false information. There's so much of fake news that is going around. Um, and I'm sure things that are being sent to you, I ask you and I urge you to see the authenticity of these, uh, these clips, things that are being sent to you before posting it on the net, before posting it on your chat groups, because there is so much of false information that is going around now and that is really bringing a lot of fear and I think bringing more fear to people right now. But in this time, we have got to shut down the voice of the enemy. We've got to shut down the voices around us and really truly trust God in this time. Because I said to you, man cannot fix this. Only God can. So I urge you, before posting things on your chat groups, see whether it is true, see the authenticity of it, that it's not fake news that we are publishing, the fake news that we are sending around. Because I think it's creating more and more fear with people. So please be careful of that. Uh, take this time to really uh, look to God, to trust the Lord. Put these voices that you are hearing aside. And yet the one voice you should be hearing right now is the voice of God. And I trust that tonight you are going to be hearing God's voice. Amen. And, and family, friends, those that are watching right now from wherever you are, I want you to Really take this time, sit down, get a cup of coffee, um, sit with your families, and let's go through God's Word. Let's, let's hear what God's 
what, what's in God's heart for us. Because I believe that God is the one that is taking us through this time. And this time of quarantine. God is in control. I want to share with you firstly Romans uh, chapter 8 um, and in verse 28. If you have your Bibles, you want to turn to that. And it's a very, it's a scripture that I believe a lot of us know. It says in verse 28, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. So for those, if you've loved God, you love God, and you are the one that your life is connected to Him, and you are really, really connected to God, you love Him dearly with all your heart. And you, you are following Him as, as the Word declared. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You are serving God. You love God. God is saying that He will work all things. I'll read it again to you. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good. So there's a great things that's going to come out. There's good that's going to come out of this time that we are spending in quarantine. This crisis that we are in. There is good that's going to be coming out. And if you love God and you, and you really cherish God and you really know your Father, know the Father that you are walking with, the Father that you are connected to, this is your portion. God says, I will turn all things to work together for our good. And we're going to stand on that. And even, uh, even so, as well as, as a servant of the Lord, as a man of God that's uh, sitting before you, and really sharing God's word. In the book of 2 Chronicles, let me share that with you quickly. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20. And I want you to, to hear what I'm speaking to you tonight, family. It's not coming from me. It's the Lord that is speaking through me. And in verse 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20, it says, They rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa, and when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. When you put your trust in the Lord, you will be established. This is what God's word says. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed, and you will prosper. And what I'm sharing with you tonight is bring you to a place where you're going to prosper in God. When you come out of this quarantine, when you come out of this time that God has separated us, you are going to come out stronger. You are going to come out greater. You're going to come out with great success. Like the Israelites, when they came out of Egypt, they came out with great wealth. They came out with great success. And God is saying that you listen to the voice of Listen to my voice. Listen to the voice of God that is coming to you that will cause you to prosper. Amen? So church, I want to ask, what is really happening? We all have a question of what is really happening now. The things that, are, that we're seeing, the, the news that we are hearing, everything that is taking place, what is really happening on the earth? And I want to draw your attention to, to one thing tonight. And that is... God is restoring the earth. If you hear the news and you, if you're on Google and you see what is happening, I think in, in today's news it was reported about the earth being restored. There's things that are happening. I mean, birds that are coming back. There's uh, the pollution has decreased. Things that are being restored on the earth. And God, it seems like God is bringing the earth and restoring it to its original state. And this is what God wants. This is what God, I believe, is doing at this present moment. He's renewing, is replenishing the earth. And we can see reports of that. We can see exactly what is taking place right now. That's why you've got to stand and you've got to believe that God is doing something for His people. God is doing something in the lives of His people that we are going to be, we are going to come out stronger in this time, family, in this time that we are going through, in this time of quarantine, we are going to come out stronger than ever before. And I want you to understand, 
the quarantine that God has brought us into and what we are, ex what we are experiencing right now, where is the lockdown and every one of us have set aside, we cannot go out, we are in our homes. I want you firstly to understand is that the quarantine as, is there for us firstly that God is bringing us back to Him. He's bringing His people back to Him, church. He's bringing His children back to Him. He's bringing those that have gone astray, those that have, that have walked away, those that have, that have said, you know, just moved away from God and has made other things more important. God is drawing us back to Him. And I want you to take this time of this quarantine to understand that God is bringing us back to Him. He's bringing us and He's calling us for a time of separation. That we can come out of all the things that we've been, we've been entangled with. God has set us aside in a time of separation. In a time of drawing us back to Him. Because God is, He has His people in His heart. Church, He's holding us in the palm of His hands. And He says, come back to me. I want to be there. I want you to draw to me. I want, as, as my word declares, draw, to, draw near to me so that I can draw near to you. God is saying, this time <clears throat> of quarantine, He is setting us aside. He's separating us. He's drawing us back to Him. And family, you have the time right now to get into your closet. You have the time now to go and say, Lord, I repent. It's also a time of repentance. It's also a time to repent and say, Lord, I repent. I have made things. I've given priority to other things than you. I've given my time to more than other things than you. And now that I'm here, I'm sit, I am seated in my home with my family, I, I want to. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for the things that I've done. Forgive me for not spending the time. Forgive me for making other things more important than you. And I believe, church, that God wants to draw you back to Him. That is our. We, have, we serve a loving God. We serve a merciful God. In the book of Peter, I think it's in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it speaks about God. Is not slow as we take as slow. God is waiting for that everyone could come to repentance. That's what He's waiting for. He, he, he is not, he's not taking this time. He's not slow as we come slow. He is there waiting. He's waiting for you to repent. He does not want you to go to hell. He does not want you not to be in part of His family. He wants you to come and to repent. And I believe that this is a time for repentance as well. That God wants to bring us back. And God is saying, I am there. I, I love you. I, I, I forgive you for the things that you've done. But this is a time that we get back to Him. This is the time that we can come back and set aside and say, Lord, I am separating myself and I just want to focus everything on you. You need to do that, church. You need to do that because this is the time. This is the reason. And I believe this is what God, in this time of quarantine, that's what God is bringing us to. And church, I want you. I said this and I even preached a message uh, a few times on, on, on a Sunday. And I said to you, God as a remnant that He is preparing. God has a remnant that He is preparing for the last days. God is setting aside a people. Even in the days of Elijah, the time when the 450 plus the 400 uh, prophets of Baal, the false prophets, when Elijah on the mountain was destroyed, before that, Elijah said, I have set aside a hundred, a hundred prophets of the Lord in a cave. And he fed them, and he kept them, and he preserved them. I believe that God is, is, has a remnant. He has a remnant for those last days. 
that he's preparing and prepared. And church, I've said this many a time, you are that remnant. There's a remnant that God has placed. In our church, I declare and I share this with you. God has brought you. Become the remnant of God. You have the time right now. You have the time to say, Lord, I'm putting everything aside. I'm putting everything and I want to be connected. I want to be part of that remnant that you are preparing for these last days. And church, God is the one that is calling us to be serious with Him. He's calling us to be really, really serious with Him. There's a remnant that He's set aside. He's set apart for Him. We are set apart that we will not bow down to Baal. We will not bow down to Babylon. Let me share the scripture with you in Revelation chapter 3, if you want to turn there very quickly. Revelation chapter 3. And read from verse 1. This is, this is the seven churches that John was addressing. And uh, Jesus was addressing through John. And in, in, in chapter 3, it says, verse 1, To the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirit of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die. For I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. So remember what you have received and heard, and keep it and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know it. You will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will be clothed in white garments. And I will not erase his name from the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has a hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen, church. God is calling us aside. He set aside. There's ones that are clothed with white garments. We are the remnant that will be here in those last days that God will use in an incredible way. And I trust that you are going to be part of that remnant of God. And this morning, I, this, this morning when I was uh, spending time and just pondering over the things of God, I truly believe that God has dropped so much of things in my spirit. Amen? And also, the things that I've been doing, the things that over these years that I've been speaking and I've been sharing with you, sharing the heart of God, church was to build you up. I never concentrate. I, I, I thank God for the building that we have. I thank God for the beautiful, beautiful church that we have built, everything that God has given us. But my time, my efforts has been spent in building your lives, in building you up in the things of God, in building you in the dimensions of heaven so that you are able to withstand any storm. You are able to withstand anything that comes your way. And I trust that you have been drawing, you have been building on everything that God has been releasing in you to spend, to bring you to a time that you are able to stand and you are able to stand strong. Amen? I want you to understand that God has built you up and God has put everything in you to bring you to a time when in this crisis you are able to stand. You are able to have such faith in God to say, I can stand the test. I'll be the one to stand whatever comes my way, whatever storm comes my way. I'm here to stand because God has built a dimension in me. He has given me everything that heaven has to offer so I can stand strong. I pray to God that you are the one that is standing strong in this time that God has has placed us in such a crisis. And one of the things that I believe that God really, really has shown us, shown me this morning, and as I was pondering over things and spending time, is God, for His remnant that He has chosen, He's going to raise them up. He's going to bring them out. When this is over, this will pass, church. This crisis will pass. This coronavirus will die. It will pass. 
But God is saying that I'm bringing out a remnant that is going to be so victorious. We are going to be so victorious. We are going to be so, so rising up so strong in God. We are going to be the ones that has been listening to God. We're going to be the ones that have been hearkening unto the voice of God and, and drawing everything that God has brought to our attention to bring us to such a time as this. And one of the things that God has really shown me, and this has really blown me this morning, and I, I was really wanting to jump. And God showed me this morning is that in the time, everything that God has prepared for us, God has brought us to a place, God has set us apart, He set us on a path to our destiny. He set us on a path, He set us on a path to our purposes. He's brought us in for a purpose. He's brought us in for, for the things that He wants us to do, for an assignment. And God was, was dropping in my spirit this morning that over this time, over these years, and over the, the period, there's so much of things that the enemy has derailed us has put stumbling blocks, has put roadblocks. There was the systems of the world that has held us back. Things that has been, that has been thrown at us that has held us back. As much as God has placed us on this pathway to our destiny, pathway to everything that He has planned and purposed for us, but there was an enemy that was putting these roadblocks, that was putting these stumbling blocks, that was causing, that was using people against us to take away things that belong to us. The enemy stole from us and we persevered and we pushed. People betrayed us. Loved ones betrayed us. We've been through it and God is saying, but I, I've put you on this path and this is what has taken place. This is what happened is to derail, is for us to stop us from going forward, is to stop us from not progressing. And God is saying, as I have I am restoring the earth where the birds are free, where pollution is on its, on its decline because there's no airplanes, there's no... God is restoring. God is saying, I am going to restore your life. I am going to restore your life, church. God is saying, is going to be pressing the reset button on your life. Wow. Church, wow. He's going to be pressing a reset button on our life to bring us back to a place where He's putting us on that path again. Where He's making those crooked paths straight. Where He's, where he's putting us on a highway, a highway of heaven, where the enemy cannot have access to this highway. God is saying over these years, everything that God has placed in you to fulfill your destiny, to take you to purpose, to bring you into the things that he has planned and prepared for you, the enemy has derailed, the enemy has put stumbling blocks, he's used people, he's used systems of the world to derail us, to stop us. But God is saying, as, I've restore, as I am restoring the earth, I'm going to restore your life. I'm pressing the restart button. I'm pressing that reset button. Church, my people, I am pressing the restart button, the reset button for you. And I'm going to bring you back into everything that the enemy has stolen. Everything that, that the enemy has put. Every, every stumbling block that the enemy put along the way. Every hurdle that the enemy has put, everything, like in the days of Daniel, when, when he prayed and the answer was sent by the prince of Persia, the enemy stopped him from coming and 21 days later, the answer came. But the answer was released on the day that, that Daniel prayed. And God is saying, the things that you have been have been laying before me the things that you believe in me for and the enemy has stopped you the enemy has derailed you your business that you have that you that you have that that you had so much to do for god there's so much of things that that you wanted to do god is saying get ready i'm pressing the reset button it's going to come it's going to come the things that the devil has stolen is going to be released back to you everything that that was taken away 
is going to be released back to you. God is saying, I'm making that crooked path straight. I'm making those highway of heaven. You're going to get on that highway of heaven. And nothing, nothing of the enemy is allowed to come on that way. Because everything that God has prepared and everything that God has planned for you, the eye that is not seen, the ear that is not heard, neither entered into the heart of man, all the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Those are the things prepared. God has prepared already. But the enemy has hijacked. The enemy has put a stumbling block. God is saying, I've pressed that reset button. It is coming back to you. Everything that I've planned for you, my people, I am bringing it back to you. I am bringing it back to you. The enemy will not, not, not stop it any longer. God is saying, I am pressing the reset button. God, church, is realigning us is realigning us, is realigning, is realigning everything back to its original state that God had created for you before the foundation of this world. Church, listen to me. I shared this with, I shared this with you on Sunday. God had created your end before your beginning. Everything has been created for you. God is saying, I'm restoring you back to original. Back to your original state of what God has prepared for you. What God has ordained for you. What God has destined for you. What God has prepared for you before you were in your mother's home. Church, you should be getting excited. I feel like jumping out of my chair right now to know that this is what God is going to do when we come out of this thing. When we come out, this too shall pass. We are coming out, and we are coming out strong, church. We are coming out stronger than before. We are coming out mightier than before. God is saying, I have set you aside for this time so that you are able to build, and build stronger. Build on everything. Build on the foundation that's been laid in you already. That God is saying that when you come out, your families will not be the same. Your children will not be the same. Your businesses will not be the same. Your jobs will not be the same. Yeah, promotions that you were that you were crying about, people were holding back. Others were getting promoted, but not you. God is saying, get ready. It is coming to you. Why? Because he's pressed the reset button. He's pressed the reset button, church. And he says, I am bringing back to you everything that the enemy as stolen from you. You are coming out into a freshness. You are coming out into something great. You are coming out into something incredible, church. I'm saying to you, take this time and hearken unto the voice of God. Listen. Listen to me. I am not speaking. It's the Holy Spirit that is speaking through me. I want you to catch this, church. It is the Holy Spirit that is speaking through me. I want you to understand that. This is God speaking to us. He says, I'm pressing the reset button. I've done it. Church, I've prepared everything for you. What this world has held back, what the system of this world has held back from you, what the injustices of the world that has held back from you. What the previous previous things that has taken place in our lives has held you back. God is saying, I am pressing the reset button, and I am bringing you into everything that has been that has that has been taken away. That the enemy has put a block. God is saying, it's a time that the enemy will cease all operation over God's people. God says he, it's a short time that he has let them loose. But God is saying now is the time. No more. The enemy will not come and derail you from what God has called you to do. The enemy will not take away anymore what God has prepared for you. God is saying, set yourself aside. Align yourself. This is a time of me aligning you into everything that I have prepared and plan for you. I, I, I trust that you are, you, are, you are really taking this in, church. This is, this is God that is speaking to us. These are words 
from heaven. This, this is the proceeding word that is coming out of the mouth of God. Amen. I trust that you are everything that God is saying to us, we will pay heed to, we will receive. Let this be, let this work deep down inside of us. Church, because everything in your life is going to come back into alignment. As, the, as God is bringing the earth back in, into, into alignment and getting God back, restoring and replenishing, God is saying, I want to do the same for you. Is that I'm going to bring everything <clears throat> in your life is going to come back in to alignment. You're going to come out of this quarantine. You're going to come out with such freshness. You're going to come out with such, with such joy. You're going to come out with such, with such fervency in the spirit that you want to go on for God, that your purpose that you have for God is going to continue and nothing is going to hold you down. God is saying, I'm bringing you back to your original pattern, to what I've created for you, for what I have purposed you for, and everything that the enemy along the way has stunted you, that has stopped you, that has held you back. God is saying, I have pressed the reset button. It is all going to be released back to you. Everything that has been taken away from you, church, is going to come back to you. And I'm so, so grateful that I'm here today. I am so grateful that I'm alive at this time, at this season. I know many people might think, are you crazy to be alive at this time? But this is the time. It is such a, a, a pleasure to be alive at this time because we're going to see God's power like we have never seen it before. We're going to see, church, the greatest outpouring of God's presence before He comes. We are going to see. We're going to see that. And it's already begun. Come on. It has already begun. The greatest outpouring has already begun. God is going to do some incredible things. You're going to see the supernatural power of God. You're going to see such great and mighty things that God is going to be showing us and doing through this time. I want to, <clears throat> just before I finish, I just want to take you to the days of Noah, and I'm, I, I, I've been reading this, and you are really, really, I want you to really take in what I'm saying. We're going to look at the life of Noah, and then the days of Noah, when he was quarantined. It was a quarantine that he was put in. And let's look at it, and let's turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 6, right in the book of Beginnings. Genesis chapter 6. <clears throat> if you're there, you want to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 6. Firstly, in chapter 5, and you know the story about Noah, that God had, had said to him, you are the one that is blameless, you are upright, and you have found favor. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. We know that he's found favor. And if you look at him in, in, in Genesis chapter 5 verse 29, when, when he spoke about the, the generations. And in verse 29, it says, Now he called his name Noah. Lamech lived 182 years and became the father of his son, which is in 528. 29, now he called his name Noah, saying, This one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands, arising from the ground which the Lord has cursed. And in, verse, in chapter 6, if you look at, if you look at uh, in verse 12, it says, God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted the way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is full with violence because of them, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourselves an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I just want to take a few scriptures to show you, to show you how Noah was quarantined and what happened. And if you look at in, in, in uh, verse 21, it says, after, his, after God showed him all the things that he has to do and how he has to build the ark, 
In verse 21, he said, And as for you, take for yourselves some of all food which is edible, and gather it to yourself, and it shall be for food for you and for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him. So he did. God quarantined Noah when he told him to build the ark just for him and his family. Church, that was a quarantine. That was putting aside, putting him and his family alone in the ark. He said, go and build the ark. And he said, when you build it, and you know the instruction about getting all the animals in there. And it says in verse 21, he says, And take for yourselves some food that you will eat. And this is what this quarantine is about. God has, has set us aside. He says, now take some food for yourself. Take some food for yourself so that you are able to eat. And you know, one of the things that this coronavirus had brought out has revealed people's hearts. And it's sad for me to say this to you today, that in our nation, we have such selfish people. In the time of stockpiling, of taking the stock and putting, we are quarantined for 21 days. I mean, you've bought, there's, there's so much of the shelves that you're going, it's cleaned out. I mean, the selfishness of people has been revealed of how the stockpiling, what they have done, not leaving for the others. Those workers that are doing the essentials right now, that are out there while we are in our homes, people have never thought about them, but they have thought about themselves to pull all the food just for themselves, stockpiling and not thinking about the next person. So this virus also revealed a lot of hearts of people. And it's sad, but if you look at if you look here, as for you, take for yourself some of all food which is edible and gather it to yourself and it shall be for food for you and for them. And this is what Noah did. And in, verse, in chapter 7, verse 1, Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless. He was upright. And I want you to see how God dealt with him. And I'm, I'm bringing this to you, fathers, uh, men, women that are, that, are, that are single parents, you are the head of the home. God is bringing this to us to make us understand that we are the head of the home and we have got to stand righteous because of what we do, the lives that we live and how we live our lives will cause our families to rise. Or fall. Noah was a righteous man. He was upright. He was blameless. And this is, I want you to see how God dealt with him. In, in verse, if you look at it in, in chapter 6, in verse, uh, in verse 8, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah Walked with God. <laughs> if you're a man that has walked with God as the head of the home, your family are safe. Your family will come into everything that God has prepared and planned. And if you look, if you look here, it says, now the earth was corrupt. No, before that, in verse 10, it says, Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. If you look and if you read, he, Noah took his wife, his three sons, and their wives, eight of them that were in the ark. But it was because of Noah being a righteous man, blameless, upright, that his family was saved. Now let's read on. In chapter 7, verse 24. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to read the whole thing. You can read the whole entire, go and study, go and see exactly what, what God instructed, how God instructed Noah. But look at this in verse 24 of chapter 7. The water prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Noah was in the ark for 150 days. 
150 days. Verse in chapter 8. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle and were with him in the ark. And God caused a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. Also the fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were closed and the rain from the sky was restrained. And the water recited steadily from the earth. And at the end of 150 days, the water decreased. In the seventh month, on the seventh day of the month, the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. Seven is a, is a number of rest. God rested on the seventh day. And it says, in the seventh month, on the seventh day of the month, the ark rested upon the mountain of Ararat. God is saying, I want you to rest through this time of the quarantine. Noah was in the ark church for 150 days with his family. That's a quarantine that he was there. There was no windows on the side. Only on the top. That the only thing that Noah could do was to look up towards heaven. God made it so that the door that was shut, he could not open. Because if, if he was able to open the door, if there was windows on the side, he could see. He had family, he had friends, he had people that he knew that he would want to be on the ark. But God sealed it. God sealed the door. So that no one, that no one in his family could see nobody. And the only place they could look, and the only way they could look was up through the door, through the window that they had in the roof of the, of the ark. So church, on that 150th day, when the ark stopped, and when Noah and his family came out, wow. Everything of the past was gone. Everything that they've experienced previously was gone. They came into a brand new season. They came into a brand new start. They came into something just fresh all around. No corruption. Nothing around us. Everything. Everything was just, wow, serene, just just fresh. You can imagine that 150 days that they spent in the ark. And this is our fourth day of quarantine. Fourth day of us coming into the lockdown. They spent 150 days. But when they came out, everything of the past was gone. And this is what I believe. That God has brought us into this time of this quarantine. And if you look at him <clears throat> in chapter 8, but God remembered Noah. Can you truly say today that God remembers you? Remembers you of the things that you have done. Remembers you of what you have done in the past. The things that you have done. The, 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 the commands that you've obeyed. That's your obedience to you. Can you say that God remembered everything that God told you to do, you have done? Can you come to that place where you can say, God, like, like God says to, but God remembered Noah. Are you remembered for the good that you have done? Are you remembered for the things that you have taken, for taking care of your families, for taking care of the people that God has brought before you? And for taking care of the church, taking care of the house, can you, can you come to a place where God can look at you and say, I remember everything that you have done, the good. Church, I want to say this to you. If you sit down and you say, there's nothing that I can bring to God that he can remember. Come on, start now. Start now. And say, Lord, I missed it. I really missed it. When I had the opportunity of giving, I didn't give. When I had the opportunity of blessing people, I didn't. When somebody needed a glass of water, I didn't. I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you simple things for you to understand. When you had the opportunity 
to do the things that God has set before you to do, you, you turn a blind eye to it. But here it says, but God remembered Noah. Why? Because Noah was, he found favor in God. He was upright. He was blameless. And because of who he was, his family was brought into everything that God had prepared for them. Is realigning your life. When you're going to come out of this, you're going to step out like Noah, Noah stepped out. I mean, your, 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 the reset button is going to be pressed on your finances. Your reset, the reset button is going to be pressed on your businesses. The reset button is going to be pressed on your families, on your children, on your jobs. It's going to be pressed to bring you back where you walk out and you say, Wow, this is the supernatural power. This is what God is going to be doing in these days, church. Supernaturally, God is going to take away, is going to press the reset button on things that have held us bound. He's going to press that reset button. And you're going to come out strong. I just want you to just believe the words that is coming out of my mouth right now. Because it is coming out of the mouth of God. Church, you are going to see something incredible that is about to take place. Something incredible. And I'm saying to you, God has chosen us for such a time. <clears throat> as this. He's chosen us that we could be the ones to really get ready to see the supernatural power and grace of God being released upon us. That's the word that God has placed in my spirit to share with you. And church, I don't want you to be fearful. I don't want you to panic. I don't want you to say, God, I don't know what the future holds for me. I don't know what's going to happen to my children. I don't know what's going to happen to this. I do, I'm, I'm so uncertain of what's going to happen after this lockdown. Don't. Don't, church. I am urging you, don't. Listen to what God has just released to you. And stay and build this thing in you. Go and listen to this, to this message over and over again till it gets deep down on the inside of you. It happened in the days of Noah. Noah found favor in God. And in the days of Noah, when he walked out of that ark, he came out. I'm sure when he was there, before he got onto the ark, there was so much of things that happened. He owed people. He did this. He did that. Everything that was there. There was corruption. There was everything around. He was, he was caught up in all that. But yet God said, Noah found favor in my sight because of him being blameless and upright. Church, if people in the world says that you've got to do what the world is doing, ah, don't listen to the lie of the devil. Don't listen to the lie of the devil. Noah, in his days, there was corruption. I read that scripture to you. The world, the land, everything was corrupt. But out of that, God says, I saw Noah found favor in my sight because he was blameless, he was upright. You will win by righteousness. Don't bow down to the, to the system of the world. Don't bow down to Babylon. Don't bow down to what the world is offering you. You only win by one way and that you win by righteousness. You will win by righteousness. Noah was a righteous man. He was an upright man. He was a blameless man. And God protected him and his family and wiped out everything and brought them into something brand new. God is going to bring you into a new season. He's going to bring you into something brand new. He's going to bring you into something so incredible that you're going to look back and say, God, wow, thank you. Why? Because... You stood and you looked to God. One of the reasons God made the ark with just the window on the top 
is that Noah will not look around, but will look up. I leave that with you, church, tonight. Look up to God. Look up to Him and trust Him. And He will be the one to direct your paths. He's going to bring you out into something great. Don't ever fear. And I want to just thank you for, for spending this time, setting this time. There's nowhere we can go, by the way, for just sitting with your family and listening to this. I want you to pay heed to what God has spoke tonight. And pay heed to everything that you're hearing. Church, <clears throat> there is so much of foreign voices that is going around now. Look and discern true men of God that is bringing you a word from the heart of God. There's a lot of voices that are going on right now, foreign voices that will lead you the wrong way and lead you down the wrong path. But you listen to men that carry the heart of God. And you, as the word in Chronicles, if you listen to the prophets, true prophets of God, you will prosper. And I want you to take this time, continue praying, continue uh, studying, continue reading the word, continue standing with your family, building yourselves up, because this is a time that you must, you must, you must build yourself, that when you leave and when you come out of this quarantine, <clears throat> church, you don't go backward, but you go forward. Don't ever make a vow to God that you cannot keep. Because when you come out of this time of quarantine, your life must continue in the same manner. What you place valuable in this time of quarantine must continue when you are out of that quarantine. One of the mistakes that Noah made was he brought the curse back. You know the story. When he got drunk and he was lying naked and his son says, see me brought the curse back into the land, into the world, into the earth. Don't be like on the 9-11 when those planes hit the Twin Towers for three months, two, three months. People were running to the house of God. They were running to church, didn't have space to put them in. But three, four months later, people slowly started getting back to their old ways. God is saying, don't. This is one time God has set aside. He says, when you come out, you come out strong. But you continue in that intensity. Don't lose the faith. Don't lose. Don't say, well, in this time of quarantine, I will I'll behave myself. But when I'm out, go back to the things that you were doing. God will judge you for that. So hear my heart today. God is building this in you to bring you out, church, so that you can continue in a new season, in a great way that you know that God is the most important one in your life. Amen. Thank you once again for, for me coming to your home. I want to just pray with you right now and that God will continue strengthening you. And I want you, church, to continue. Go and dig. You have the time. Go and dig on these scriptures. Go and read. Go and, go and search out for yourself and see what God is showing you. There's some things that God, over and above this, God will show you. And I want you to draw that revelation. So, as I pray right now, I want you to really just trust God. That, and, and I want you to see, one thing I want you to see is that I want, to see, I want you to see that God is holding you and your family in the palm of His hands. So, Father, I thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for sharing your heart today with your people, God. Those that are at home in this lockdown and those around around that are watching right now father i thank you for this time that you set aside for us a time that we can come and draw close to you oh father you long you long to be with us you are drawing us back to you lord and father i pray right now i pray for those that are watching lord 
I pray for a supernatural experience that they will have with you. Even through this time of lockdown, Lord. Even through this time, my God, that they are spending with you, Lord. They will have an encounter with you. Father, I am praying for that. They will have an encounter with you. They will have an experience, God, that will carry them through for the rest of their lives. Father, because you have set us aside, you call us in this time of quarantine, Lord that we can come to you, that we can look to you, that we can place our trust in you because we know that you are holding us in the palm of your hands. And Father, as you have said, your word has declared, God, the reset button has been pressed, God. You are bringing us into alignment of everything that you have planned and prepared as you are bringing the earth back to alignment, Father. You are bringing your children back into alignment. You are restoring the things that the canker worm and the palmer worm that has stolen, Lord. You are restoring it back to your children. You are restoring it back to them, Lord. Back to us, Father. You are realigning us and readjusting us, O oh God, into everything that you have planned and prepared, Father. God, you have pressed the reset button. Father, we thank you that everything that the enemy has stolen over these years will be returned back to your children. Every, every hurdle, every stumbling block of God that has been placed before your children, my God, Lord, will be removed in the name of Jesus. I declare that over your children right now. I declare over the remnant, over everyone, God, that is drawing, that is looking to you, Father. I pray that there will be no more hurdles, no more stumbling blocks. But God, supernaturally, you have, created, you have made those crooked paths straight, Lord. You have placed us on the highway of heaven where nothing of the enemy can come. The enemy has no bound. He's got no access to that highway, Lord. You are placing us on that highway that we will go straight, Father. You are fast-forwarding us, Lord, into everything that has been lost over these years. You are bringing back to your children. And God, I thank you. And I release that, Father, as they stand together with me, Father. I release over them right now, Father, your blessings, your grace. And I release peace over them right now, Father. Peace to them, Lord. Peace to the house. Peace to all that they have, Father. And God, I pray right now. I take this time, God, to pray against this virus, Lord. We come against, as we, I stand together with men and women around the world that are standing and praying, God, I pray and we, we decree and declare, Lord, that this virus shall cease in the name of Jesus. It will cease, oh God, in the name of Jesus. It will not progress. It will not, God, progress, Father, in the name of Jesus. We cancel, Lord, the effects of that virus, God. We cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that you heard, you are hearing the cries of your children in the land. And God, we know that this pestilence, that this virus will be pushed back in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, family, friends, thank you once again for being in your homes. I pray a mighty blessing upon you. And until we meet again, stay strong and stay in your homes. Do not leave your homes. We've got another, I think it's probably about 17 days. Uh, and we trust in God that it will not go further than that. Stay in your home so that we can get back and we can see the power and we can see God's true manifestation of His goodness upon our lives. Stay blessed. God bless you. Till we meet again.